Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Cube Setup Demonstration. I'm Kevin Westhouse from River Falls, Wisconsin. Been uh, working with the Cube almost since inception, and have done, I think, probably exceeded a thousand broadcasts. So anyway, I'd like to share with you today just the basic setup for the Cube. Um, some things to remember, though, even before we get to the setup. If you're going to go do a broadcast somewhere in a gym or field, here's some things that I have forgotten that I'm going to share with you that you want to remember. Scout your facility ahead of time. Find out where the outlets are. Don't forget to bring extension cords, and not just a 10-foot extension cord. You may need 50 feet of extension cord. Don't forget to bring a power strip. I have forgotten power strips. And you get there and you have four devices to plug in. Don't forget the power strip. Um, tape, so if you have to cross walking paths or things like that, things to tape your cords and internet wires down with. So those are some things you want to remember. One other thing, a table. Something as simple as a table. You might get to a school, they don't have an extra table, bring a portable table with you. So those are just some things that I think you should be thinking about even before you go do the broadcast. Let's jump ahead. Let's say you arrive at the gym, you've scattered it out, you know where you're going to sit, you have your outlets connected, you, you feel confident that you can get an internet connection, either hardwired, which is preferable, or you can use a, use a, some type of uh, MiFi wireless card. You want to be able to get a good internet connection because streaming video is really dependent on getting a great internet connection. Again, hardwired is preferable. Another heads up, you may call a school ahead of time and, uh, hey, do you have wireless internet? Can we use that? Oh, they'll be like, oh, sure, no problem. You get to the school, you log on to their Wi-Fi and you'll learn that you can't stream YouTube, you can't stream the Cube, anything that's video related. A lot of schools have that blocked. So don't count on a school's free Wi-Fi to stream. If you do, you'd probably be skunked about nine out of 10 times. They may also tell you, oh yeah, there's a hard connection right over there. You can plug into that at any time. I've been to schools where I plugged into their hard connection, and, but they have firewall blockers that don't allow you to use the school's uh, servers. So that also does happen. So test this stuff ahead of time. Make sure you're asking the right connections. And I think I would always have my own private MiFi card, especially if I'm going on the road to try to do games. Home games, you can kind of work that out with the local administration. Okay, you get to the gym, you get to the field, you, th you think you're gonna broadcast today. Very first thing you need to do, get your computer out and check your internet connection. I would just harp in on the internet connection, check your internet connection. I'm plugged into the wall. I talked to the administration. I actually went a day ahead of time and tested it to make sure it worked. But sometimes you can test it yesterday and it won't work today. So I got it plugged into the wall. I have this little device for my Mac computer. Um, it's a, a little uh, device where I can plug my internet into, and then it plugs directly into the Mac computer over here on the side. Plug that in, right. <laughs> and this is, why, this is why we practice with this stuff too, so you can get it. There we go, so my internet is plugged in. I also have my computer plugged into a power, to a power cord. I've gone to a game, I've forgotten my power cord, and then you get, about one hour and 50 minutes into an event, it's about ready to go to overtime and your battery dies. So make sure you bring your power cord for your computer as well. All right, so your internet's plugged in. Now, this is like a moment of truth, because I've done none of this other stuff yet. I haven't done audio or video. I'm just seeing if I have a good internet connection. I call this the first moment of truth. So I go down to my computer, and here's another hot tip. Go up to the top bar, and this thing that looks like a baseball field up here, in the top bar, this is like for the Wi-Fi thing. Make sure your Wi-Fi is turned off if you have a hard connection. I have stream games where I was plugged into the hard wire and I forgot to turn my Wi-Fi off and I was using some weak Wi-Fi signal from the area and I couldn't figure out why my stream kept breaking up throughout the event. It was because I didn't turn off the Wi-Fi when I'm trying to go hardwire. So, hardwire is plugged in, does it work? I already have pre-saved speedtest.net. You'll want to have that bookmarked in your favorites because right now I'm gonna check and see if the internet works. When I get to the vent, I always click on that and hold my breath and I see it coming up, I'm like, yes, we have internet. So that's the first good news. Now I wanna test the speed. So I hit begin test. It's connecting to the World Wide Web. We get a ping on there. There's the ping, 
And it, this, we're, we're definitely on a T1 situation right now. We're at almost 400 megabits per second, which is just off the charts. You really need about three to stream halfway decent. This is 372, and again, you need about three. So if you get to facility and you get these types of speeds, this is a good thing. That was download. This is the one you're really concerned with. It's called upload because you're going to be uploading video to the web. Here at this facility, I am getting about 85, 87, let me see, 80, 87 um, megabits per second, which is fantastic, and you can stream at high levels with that. So, whew, that's hurdle number one. You've arrived, you have internet connection, you're about ready to go. So, I'm satisfied with that. So now I know I can continue on with my broadcast situation. Now, I want to, there's really three pieces to a broadcast. There's the internet piece that I was describing, which is key to getting your broadcast to the web. There's the audio section, which we're gonna work on next. And then there's the video section. And then there's a component here in a black magic converter box that brings these all together. Next piece of equipment I like to get going is my audio. I know I have the internet. The next most important piece of your broadcast is good audio. So I have, a, I have a mixer board. Some mixer boards are smaller. This is an X-Henry 1202 mixer board. It's capable of handling four, four channels of, uh, of microphones and audios. Some might look different than this. This one is pretty typical in the industry and one that the Cube uh, promotes and endorses. So. So I put that down. I have to get power to that. Again, hopefully you brought your power strip, you plug that in. I already have mine uh, plugged into the power strip. The little, the little power connector on this is kind of tricky. It has three really small pegs in there that are very fragile. If you go ahead and try to plug the, I'm telling you this because it's happened to me. If you go try to plug your power into the X-Henry uh, board and you start jamming it in there, you will break those pegs and you'll be short a power supply and you will not be broadcasting. So look at the back of the board, see where the little holes are on there, see where your little holes are on here, and then plug in very gently, very gently. It's lit up, I'm plugged in. Again, if you jam that in there, those pegs will break and you won't have a power supply. I have a broken one at home. Good, I've got power on my board, that's a good thing. Another thing you're going to need in order to hear yourself in your headsets is a headphone amplifier. A headphone amplifier, think of this as basically your volume knob on your radio in your car. This is going to control the volume in your headsets. This will have nothing to do with what the listeners and viewers are seeing at home, purely for your own uh, amplitude in your own headsets. So I'm going to set that down here and I'm going to connect it to the board. I'm gonna connect that to this board with a quarter inch plug and it's got three rings on it for stereo. So I take one end of that and I plug it into the phones. It says phones. It's on the top row on this device. It's probably not on the top row on every device, but I plug it into the top row. Take this, there's one spot in the back. It says stereo input, plug it in. So it's now connected to the board. I also need power to this little device. And that, uh, so just plug it right in the back here. And that has a green light on it that says it's powered up. So I've got it connected to the board and I have power to it. We are getting close to being able to hear ourselves. Now I take my headsets, just a typical uh, headset recommended by the Cube. Got a nice long cord on it so a broadcaster could veer away every little bit. This one has uh, the nice uh, three-prong microphone jack. Go over to my board, plug it into the top of the board. Take this other uh, audio end, plug it in to the headphone amplifier right there. So this is for the audio part, this is for the microphone portion. That's plugged in there. Once that's done, I like to test it, see if, I got my, see if everything's working. So I put this on, check one, two, and yes, I have volume, I have sound. That is good, that is good. So we have our internet working now, we have our audio working, and uh, usually if we have two broadcasters, we plug two in, so I'll just duplicate that. 
Also, as I put this in there, there's also a quarter inch on the audio board. There's also a quarter inch microphone. If you don't have these fancier three prong mic adapters, sometimes it's just a quarter inch adapter that goes in there. So it could be either of those for your mic. In this case, it's the higher quality three pronged mic connector. So the, uh, my audio is working on the audio board. Audio could be a whole hour presentation. And I want to emphasize when you're doing this broadcast, you can have average video and great audio and still have a pretty good broadcast. If you have great video and your audio is not good, people will turn it off very, very quickly. You can't stand watching something with bad audio. So practice with the audio. Just for a quick 101 novice thing here, and you'll have to practice this. There's two very important knobs on the audio. Each row for each microphone has some knobs. You'll want to pay attention to the gain knob and also the levels knob. I put those at about noon, so straight up on both of those. Depending on your voice levels, um, the type of devices you have, it may be a little bit less, a little bit more than that, but start out at about noon. How you practice this is try it at night, do some test broadcast, have people listen from afar. But I'm telling you, practice a lot with the audio and get your audio dialed in. It's just very, very important. On this X Henry board, there's also a slide knob on the right. You'll want to make sure the slide knob is at zero. So make sure that's at zero. On transport, that slide knob is always sliding up and down the board. Make sure it's at zero. Your, uh, your control room, should, you can put that at about max for output over there. So that's your audio board. That is a very brief description. Again, practice with it. It's the only way you're going to get better. Now we want to start thinking about connecting our audio and video together. Let's transition from audio to connections to video. And again, that's done with this Blackmagic converter box. Let's connect our audio first. That's done with this cable here with a simple uh, right and left for right and left ear audio. Back to my audio board, red for right, plug that in here, top row. This is main out. You want to put this in the main out, right, left. You have that done. Now you say, I've got two ends. What do I do with these? Black magic box right here. So we were main out on there. So on this black magic box, now we go audio in. And again, it's nice that they're color coded, white, red, left and right. So audio is now connected to the black magic box. So let's put this over here. Well, before I even set it down, I need to connect the black magic to the computer. This is called a Thunderbolt cord and any Apple computer has Thunderbolt connectors. So the lightning bolt goes up, connect that to the lightning bolt, set that down. Um, the other lightning bolt end plugs in right next to the internet connector. And there you have it. Now, another hot tip, and I've seen this happen. So you'll get somebody, you say, hey, you're going to broadcast the game for me today. Um, come on out, and they do it. And they start, the game will go on, and they'll start janking with this, moving it around, moving the computer. These, these video, this connector from the black magic box to the computer, if you start moving those connections, you will lose the video. I'm just telling you right now, those connections need to be stable and then try not to move them at all during the broadcast. Because if you start doing this with a computer and moving it, there's a good chance your video signal will freeze up and you have to start over by rebooting your whole computer. So again, once you get the black magic box connected, make sure those connections from the black magic and the computer are, are held stable throughout the broadcast. Don't be sliding the computer around. Get it, get it situated. So the audio is connected. Black magic box connected to the computer. Now I want to connect my video to that same device. As I said, the black magic is bringing in audio and video, and that is done with an RCA cord. Again, an RCA cord, make sure you have a long, this is like an eight footer, which is kind of nice. Sometimes I had a four footer and I was just too short. This allows me to get my camera a little farther away from the source. 
So I go back to my black magic box, plug it into the yellow that says video in, right there. And I slide over to my camera, I'm using a Panasonic camera here. This, and my connector for this is on the right side, right front, little door opens up. I put yellow into yellow that says video out. So I have video coming out of my camera into the black magic box. The black magic box is connected to the computer. Video, or excuse me, audio from the soundboard to the black magic box to the computer. Now the computer should be recognizing all of these. Because sequence is important, we may get to the point where I try to fire this up and it doesn't recognize it. I'm going to have to restart my computer, so we'll see. I did turn my camera on now. My soundboard is on. We have an internet connection. Now we need to use the piece of software in the computer that's going to get this to the web so the cube can recognize the stream. I'm using Wirecast. You can also use Adobe Live Media Encoder. Adobe Live Media Encoder is a free app. In the case with here, the computers here in River Falls, we have Wirecast on the computers. We're going to use Wirecast today. So now I'm going to go to Wirecast to make sure Wirecast software is recognizing both my audio and video devices. Let's go there now. So I have that pre-saved. Here's Wirecast right down here. It looks like a little tornado, kind of a tornado on a hockey puck. Click on it. It's opening. It is opening. I see it's recognizing. And like I said, I'm actually kind of glad this has happened here, where I have two black boxes and the audio buttons are not moving at all. So what that means is, because of the way I, turned, I hooked everything up today, Wirecast did not recognize uh, my, my streaming devices. So now, if you're out there for the first time and you didn't practice this, practice this, this is where you probably would hit the panic button right now. Let's not panic today. Let's do a couple things. I'm just going to close out of Wirecast, go up here to the little red X, close onto that. Closing out of that is not enough on a Mac computer. You also have to go up to the top gray bar where it says Wirecast, click on it, and actually quit Wirecast. So we're totally out of Wirecast. So I'm quitting that. I'm letting that shut down. Green light went off. It went away from the tray. We're good. Now I need to restart my computer. Go up to the Apple. Hit restart. Are you sure you want to restart your computer now? Yes, I do. Restart. This would be a good time also to uh, talk to you about arriving at your, as this restarts, arriving at your event. If you come 30 minutes prior to the event starting, you'll have more sweat coming down the side of your face than the basketball team will at halftime. I'll tell you right now, you have got to uh, get there early, get there an hour early, take your time, go through your processes, but if you're rushed, it's going to be very, very stressful on you. So now I'm going to log on to my computer. Computer's logging on. And again, because Wirecast didn't recognize my devices, again, if you don't practice this, you could panic a little bit here. And even now, I'm not 100% sure it's going to work, but I'm 98% sure that it's going to recognize. So, so now I'm going to go back to Wirecast. And there it is, my little tornado on top of the hockey puck that says Wirecast. Click on it. It's thinking about it. The software is loading. And there it is. You can see now we have pictures. And watch the audio bars at the side. This is also important for audio. So I'm going to put my headsets on to make sure. Check one, two. You see how the audio levels are coming up to about 30% uh, right now? And when I get a little bit more loud, almost half, that's probably not quite enough. So then I go back to my soundboard. And I'm going to take my levels and move them to about 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock over here. And you can see how that just went up a little bit. And this is what your audience at home is going to hear. So when Wirecast opens, I like to make sure I have a picture that's recognizing the camera. That's what's on in the camera right now. And then I like to check my audio levels. And you can see we're jumping up here. And it still might even be a little soft, but I don't like to get too loud either because a lot of guys get excited during games and then you're going to be distorting. So this is pretty good right now. I think I have them both at about 1230 
as related to the indication knob and where it is on the levels on the, my soundboard. So um, good, Wirecast is recognized. This is a good thing. So I'm gonna take my headset off here. And now I'm gonna call this the home stretch because we have internet, we have audio, our video's connected, all of our devices are working, we're ready to stream. When you're on Wirecast now, you have to go find your event. You might go, wow, I'm here, now what do I do? You go up to the top bar and you click on output. There's a bunch that says file, edit, switch, media, sources, output, layout, replay, Twitter, Windows, help. Click on output. A pop down will happen, click on output settings. It'll bring up this screen here that when we, when we first loaded Wirecast, we had to configure it so it recognized the cube. We've done that here. A um, Couple things on here, encoding. Third one down here says encoding. This allows you to change the quality of your broadcast. The quality of your broadcast is really dependent upon your internet strength. Because I'm on a T1 line here, I am able to select high, and it is uh, 1,000 kilobits per second for the video, and it's adding 128 kilobits for the, for the audio. So that is a very comfortable speed. We should be able to stream with no problems. If you're using that Wi-Fi card and you're getting slower internet speeds, maybe 3,000 kilobits per second, I would recommend going to the encoding clicking on the little arrows right here, opening that up and going to medium, as which is 600 kilobits per second, or if you have a very slow connection, even going to uh, low, which is um, 250 kilobits per second. Now that's getting pretty grainy, but if you really wanna get a broadcast out and focus on the audio, and you have a terrible internet connection and some, the bowels of some gym somewhere go on low. Again, today we're on high, so you wanna check that. I like high, gives out a pretty good broadcast. Next thing you wanna do is pick your event that you're gonna to stream to. You've already uh, pre-scheduled an event, and that event will show up right here in Wirecast when you go down to channel. I'm gonna click on it, and these are all the things that I have scheduled here in River Falls, a whole bunch. And there it says live, and it says test. And each event says live or test. I'm gonna pick a test stream today, so it only is a, uh, space we can go to today to see it ourselves in private. It doesn't go out to the world. Um, there's, a, there's an Eau Claire Memorial versus the River Falls Wildcats girls varsity basketball. That's tonight, actually. I'm going to click on the test stream of that. It'll say test now before it. Don't forget, now I'm talking to myself, don't forget, Kevin, that tonight when you get to the event to go back to this page and hit live. Otherwise, you'll be thinking you're streaming because it'll show you're streaming. People will be texting you and calling you, where's the game, where's the game? And you remember, oh, I forgot to go back here and hit live. So I have it on test right now. Don't forget to hit live before the game starts. Right above that, it says authenticate. Go up there and authenticate. Enter your password right here. I'm gonna enter my password. This cube wants to make sure that this is you doing this. Hit okay. So we've got our speed, we've got our event, we've authenticated it. I am going to, I'm gonna hit okay. We are this close to streaming right now. Two pieces here, this button right here, it says stream. I'm gonna click it. It's blinking, it's blinking, and when it goes solid, we're almost there. Still, and there it is, it locks solid. You'll think you're streaming right now. You're still one click away from streaming. Take your cursor, go down to this arrow, just to the right of the word smooth. You have to click on that arrow to initiate your stream. It doesn't say it anywhere on the board. You wouldn't know that unless you tried it or saw this video today. Click on the arrow. And now we should be streaming to the test broadcast. Let's go see. I'm gonna minimize this. Don't cross out of that, you'll have to start over. Just minimize that. Now I have to get to the internet. I have high school cubes, or excuse me, I have the cube saved right here. It's loading. Here's my page, it's coming up, populating. And let me see, I have seven coming to go to my upcoming events. 
<laughs> you see, Eau Claire Memorials versus River Falls Wildcats Girls Varsity Basketball. That's the game I'm test streaming to. I'm just going to click on that game. Um, then I'm going to go over here to this little gear looking thing below the uh, right stream right there. Once I get that, I'm going to get a, a whole list of things I could choose from. I want to go to the last one called Studio. I want to get into the studio. There's three. One, two, three on the top. I want to pick two. Test stream. And now the test stream should be loading, I believe. Let's see. Oh, there it is right there. So you can see the picture on the screen. It's just what my camera is showing right here. Um, again, if I'm doing this, I would probably take my headsets. I'd do a little test one, two, three, testing one, two, three. So I'd do a little test one, two, three, testing one, two, three. Uh, you can hear that maybe through my microphone. It sounds great. That's wonderful. But this is something, again, you want to practice ahead of time. If you didn't have a lot of time to practice it ahead of time and you just want to uh, practice it at the arena, you can do the test stream, but just don't forget to go back to Wirecast and hit live. So this is working. This is good. Long as I'm here in the studio, this is also where you keep your scoreboard. Go to three, produce event, and you'll see the scoreboard right here. And long, I'm just showing you this because as long as I'm here and you want to take your whole uh, broadcast production to the next level, you can do clock. Click just to the right, clock comes on, you can change times. So you can keep the clock as the game goes on. Most people just keep the scoreboard. Every time you change something on the scoreboard, you have to hit update scoreboard. Don't forget to hit this little pop down and change your halves or quarters right there. But if you change that, you have to hit update scoreboard right there every time. So that's where your scoreboard is. Also, when you're streaming, when I'm streaming the events, I like to go over here to the monitor. It says none. And then there's a little pop down arrow. Click on that. It says none audio video. I like to click on the video button. And then this just gives me an image of actually what's streaming out to the uh, viewers at home. Here, so this starts in 16 hours and six, six hours and 16 minutes. But this will be where the live broadcast plays. One other thing, when you watch this live here as you do your scoreboard during an event, you'll want to go over here, make that bigger. And you can kind of hear right now some faint audio in the background. If you don't hit mute on, on, uh, on that right there on your monitor, You'll get feedback at home where you'll be able to hear the audio coming out of your computer as well as your headset. And it'll be very confusing for people at home. So don't forget to hit mute on your monitor just so you can watch the event going on right there. And uh, that's kind of how you, you do that. So I'm going to go back to Wirecast now. There it is. Now to stop a stream. So your event's done. You say, and good night, everybody. You come down here. Hit the stream button again, and that goes off. And you are off the air and clear, and you've just completed, you've just completed your stream on the cube. Well, you know, that's a lot of information. I'm sure you'll be going back and hitting rewind every now and then and fast forward if you got a few things, but that is your basic setup. I can't emphasize enough, internet connection, um, make sure you have your cords, make sure you find a spot, make sure you bring a table. Also, if you're going to do an event on the road and you haven't been somewhere before, crucial that you talk to their athletic director, their coaches, make sure they know you're coming, make sure you have clearance. Don't surprise anybody because it won't be good for you, it won't be good for them, and you'll just go home frustrated. So make sure you're always communicating well. As far as communication, when you schedule events, use the Twitter, use the Facebook, email the coaches, email the visiting teams, let them know you'll get a lot more viewers. I encourage our coaches now to go ahead and email that out to the visiting coaches. They seem to really like doing that, and I know the visiting team really, really appreciates it. So that's your basic setup uh, with a camera for the Cube in streaming. Um, I don't know what else to say except have fun and really engage the audience, and good luck. On behalf of River Falls Channel 16, River Falls, Wisconsin, I'm Kevin Westall saying thank you very much and happy cubing.